Well, the global warming push in the freezing cold. We'll talk about not such great timing. Protesters in D.C. urging the president to act fast on climate change, even though the government has already spent 68 billion bucks on climate change to deal with it since 2008. Kaylin Kennedy says that marching in the frigid weather isn't helping their cause. Caroline Hellman and Ron Meyer are also here. So, Kayla, you just think it's a case of uh, not not choosing the best background. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the protesters should take a break from protesting, go home, look up some information, and I'll quickly find that the science on this is by no means settled. 31 thousand scientists have signed a public petition saying that catastrophic climate change isn't happening. You know, you look at global temperatures over the last 15 years. The UK Met Office says, no, the temperatures have leveled. The science is not settled, so let's stop the liberal hysteria, take a break from the protesting, you'll get some hot cocoa, sit inside. Yeah. Ron, um, even if it were settled to their liking, uh, and even if one could allow, we've gone from addressing global warming as the issue to just, just climate change. Um, Doing so uh, and, and protesting in the middle of an Arctic blast hardly helps that cause. The optics of it hardly help, or, or do they? No, I think the optics are bad. But, I mean, this is kind of the thing. They want to, uh, to have this narrative where if it's cold, it's global warming. If it's warm, it's global warming. I mean, it's climate change, rather. I mean, whatever you, word they want to use for it. But I think that I think that's the point is that the science isn't settled. The point is that liberal governments like Norway are now coming out and saying, no, the science isn't settled. Temperatures have leveled. The Research Council of Normandy, no right-wing bash in their left-wing government, has come out and said the IPCC, the study and the, 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 the group that everyone relies on for climate climate change has actually overestimated CO2's impact on climate. And we actually do need to have this discussion, especially before doing what these protesters want, and that's imploding our, our, our economy and taking, basically saying that we're going to put policies in place that are going to hurt the poor, hurt people that need jobs right now, all for the sake of this cause that they don't even really have science behind now. Caroline, you argue science is very much behind what they're saying, right? Well, of course it is, because it's widely known that 98 percent of climatologists, who are the scientists who are experts on this, agree that climate change is happening. And I think your viewers are a little bit smarter, perhaps, than the panel, and that they know the difference between climate, which is long-term change, and weather, which is day-to-day patterns. So who are these patterns. 31,000 who apparently say it's not an issue? Are they Gavones? Who are they? Well, actually, those who think that clim the climatologists who believe that, that climate change is not human-made, and everyone agrees it's happening, it's a question of whether it's human-made or not, they have published at half the rate as those, the 98 percent who believe it, that it is happening and that it's human-made. So there is a so difference a in so terms by, of by the professionalism. So by publishing more, you have instant scientific street cred? And who are the publishers? No, but it does, it does mean that you're better published. Uh, and the fact that, that it is the winter in D.C. and the northern hemisphere is, has a different slant of sun. I don't know. I've written two books. I've written two books, not 50 books. But I like to think that those two books <laughs> made up for just Nine, the quality. There, My only no, point is that, no that that's a silly this. argument to say that, you know, you're getting published more instantly you asked me incredible. who they were and let's let's be Neil, real Neil, you getting... asked me who they were okay fair, and that's fair. not a, that's the not grants. a silly criteria who are the liberal universities giving the grants to of course it's going to be people who buy into the narrative oh who goodness. buy into the fact that global warming does exist you know but, but let's be real in the 1970s it was global cooling we had the new york times and newsweek saying hey you know what there, there's an imminent ice age coming so you're and saying about so... going to climate change you covered both ways yeah they, and they, they always change the verbiage it depends you know it's the verbiage to to justify the liberal mechanisms that they would like to put in right. place and, and that's always the narrative and we seem to forget that uh ron something is going on and you're going to make the argument you know for extreme weather patterns or you know, whether it was sandy or storms and then you know uh, unexpected blizzards. I always hear when I hear unexpected blizzards, it is winter after all, you're going to get this. But uh, again, I am not a climatologist, I'm not an environmentalist. Uh, bottom line, I do see some weird weather patterns. You uh, uh, chalk that up to what? Well, I chalk it up to that <clears throat> that it's weather patterns and like uh, like what was just being said, that weather patterns actually don't have anything to do with climate change necessarily. It has to be actual patterns. And actually, conservatives and folks who are skeptics of, of the people who say this is settled science aren't the ones saying that weather patterns make climate science. It's actually the other way around. The New York Times, the Washington Post, countless liberal writers are saying that, right, the, what you just said, that Sandy is a factor that, that it comes from global warming, which isn't true. And if you look at, we're talking about the most respected this, most respected that, the biggest and most respected scientific organization in the world, CERN, which 
has its base in, in Switzerland. They're the one doing the research on the antimatter. They came out with a study last year that said that the IPCC and all the global warming fanatics have, mis, uh, have, have underestimated one big variable, solar activity. They forgot to actually factor in the big ball of fire in the sky as much as it should be. Of course, that's what it controls temperatures. And this is how embarrassing that the climate science has become. It's not a climate science at all. These 98%, it's more of a religion. And frankly, we need to have an objective discussion on this and actually have what science calls for. And that's have the scientific method where you challenge hypotheses, challenge theories, instead of just saying, it's settled. Well, look, Carolyn, then that really begs the questions of the 68 some odd billion we've spent to address climate change. Where did that money go? Because it's still changing. Well, I, first off, it's, it's gone to a variety of programs, but secondly, it's not nearly enough. Um, we 68 are talking billion about isn't enough? That, that's correct. I mean, we're Man. talking about catastrophic. What, you're, what we're experiencing well, right now. Where has that gone to, Carolyn? Where has that money gone to? It's gone to breaks for uh, clean energy. Um, it's gone to local programs for transportation, all of which cut down on our addiction to fossil fuels. And the fact is that 2010, 11, and 12 have been the hottest years on record. You can't dispute that fact. We've had double the tornadoes what? since 95. Superstorm Sandy and, and the number of other superstorms have doubled in the past 15 years. By the way, just so to, to that point, that that again, you're the expert. Up. I'm not. But as you know, I read a prompter on TV, so I think it qualifies me as a... As an expert, um, if this proves to be, I'm told by other variant estimates, the coldest winter, it's not done yet, but the coldest winter in 20 some odd years, then does that jibe with the warmest uh, global temperatures uh, in the last three years? In other words, is, can you still have your environmental cake and eat it too? Well, absolutely, Neil. We're talking okay. about the difference between weather and climate again, because right. we're, it, it's not going to be cold. What's no matter what the weather is, is, that is we see, but that's change, my point, right? Carolyn. I love you dearly, but you can't win. I mean, it's everything is it supports your. No, own. Neil. Let me answer the question. All right, well, don't the yell at me. I'm is, asking you. Go ahead. Well, I sorry. I'm I'm it's lots right. of people talking. It's I know cold. you're a sweetie, Neil. <laughs> um, I, the, the fact of the matter is that it traps when we have climate change or global warming, which I'm happy to call it because that's what it is long term, um, what we have is more moisture in the air. So, of course, we're going to see more extremes, more extreme okay. weather storms, uh, you know, thunderstorms, rain, et cetera. It is basic science. And right, the fact so that Kayla, the American public that? doesn't she know this is that That's is just political. part of what happens in this environment. It's, it's basic science, but I think we can agree on the fact that this is not settled, and this should be by no means be used as a justification. That's Political. For holding up 20,000 jobs political. that could That's be created. We're, we're holding up 20,000 jobs science? that could be created at the Keystone Pipeline, but we're holding that up for disputed science. Three out of the two out of the three of us on this panel seem to agree that global warming isn't happening, or if it is happening, it's not as catastrophic well, as what they're saying. There you cool. go. So one we hold up economic cool. progress sorry. for the sake of unsettled science. Guys, it's, it's a debate that rages forever and ever and ever, <laughs> um, but we will watch very closely.